Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and today uh, we're going to continue the, uh, the video series on using an inexpensive uh, and simple Raspberry Pi computer in order to set up a social media data mining machine. Uh, you can uh, obtain a, a Raspberry Pi basic set for uh, about $30, uh, add on the price of a keyboard and a mouse at about five to ten dollars a piece and you're ready to go um so in the last two videos we talked about how to physically set up a raspberry pi and how to uh, set up your raspberry pi for the first time so you can run a raspberry pi uh, operating system in this third video in this series we're going to talk about uh, the environment in which you do things uh, on a Raspberry Pi. And really there are two environments. The first environment is a graphic user interface, and the second environment is uh, something called a terminal, or a shell, or a Linux environment, um, or uh, your, your text-based um, uh, uh, environment here. So the text-based environment is perhaps the simplest one. If you click at the top of your graphic user interface, you'll see something called LX Terminal or Terminal, something like that. Click on it, and you'll be taken back to the screen uh, that you start with whenever you start your Raspberry Pi. And on that screen, you'll see uh, a prompt that says Raspberry Pi, and then a dollar sign. And that dollar sign has a cursor uh, that is either square or blinking afterward, uh, right here. And it is saying, hey, I'm, I'm ready for you to tell me what to do. Um, and when you're ready, you simply type in commands. And the commands you type in are commands in Linux, L-I-N-U-X, um, which is a very, very simple uh, uh, operating system. It's very much like Windows or Apple in the sense that it runs off the basis of commands. But what's different is that instead of clicking on a picture or double clicking on a picture that represents an icon, which is an idea of something that you want to do, you uh, type in a command in text that will very exactly describe what you want to do. So let's talk about a few of those commands just as a way for you to navigate around. Navigating is fairly easy if you remember a few things. Um, the first of all is the way to get out, um, and then uh, you can always get started again if you get lost, and that is the command exit. E-X-I-T takes you right out, and then you can start right back up again. I can't tell you how many times I've exited. So exit is the first command. The second command you might want to use is uh, to get a, a directory or figure out what's in front of you where you are. Uh, and that is ls. Because um, everything in Linux is organized into folders. Uh, little areas, like in a filing cabinet, that contain uh, other uh, folders uh, and also files, uh, which are uh, basically either pieces of information or pieces of text or pictures, other things that you might want to work with. So I'm going to type in ls, and it will show me here something very brief, which is a, uh, a set of two uh, pieces of text in purple. One of them is called desktop, and the other one is called python under slash games. Now, if I want to find out what's in, say, python under slash games, I'll just type in ls and then uh, make a space and then type in python under slash games and it'll tell me what's there, which is great. Uh, there's a lot of things there and you'll see a number of items. They're color coded so that you would know, oh, there's nothing here that is purple. So I know there are no more uh, subdirectories in my directory. I see things that are green. They are um, they're called WAV files or MIDI files. They're sound files. I see things in pink. Those are images. And I see some other things, uh, .py and .txt. Uh, and those are text files. Some of them uh, will run commands. 
uh, and some of them just describe um, pieces of information that I might want to look at. So uh, taking a look at audio and graphics is a little complicated, but we can always take a look at uh, text. And the way to do that, I don't know why we use this command, but we do. It's called PICO, P-I-C-O. You type in P-I-C-O, and then you'll type in the name of the fo uh, file that you want to look at. Um, but first, before you do that, you want to make sure that you're actually not just looking at that folder, but you're in that folder. So let's visit that folder. And to visit that folder, to change our directory uh, to one of the two that's available, desktop and Python games, we're going to type in cd, change directory, cd uh, space python under slash games. Uh, and now if I type just plain old ls, it shows me, hey, it's, it's right here. It's right in front of you. And at that point, then, I can take a look in my uh, text uh, editor, P-I-C-O space, and then I'm going to type in the name of, of one of these files. There's one here that is called star pusher levels.txt. That's interesting. I'd like to take a look at it. So I type in pico space and then the name of that text file. And then check this out. It appears. And then I can go down through, and this is really a simple word processor. I could change things. I could add words. I'm adding words at the end of a line. <laughs> Always be careful when you do that. Know what you're going to change. Um, and then I can use my arrow keys to scroll down through. And if I need some help, there's a series of commands down here that are listed where um, the upper caret indicates holding down the control key. Um, so I could, uh, with control G, I could get uh, help. And this is really important. Uh, control W, where is, and then uh, most importantly, getting out. Uh, it says there's a command down here called control X. Okay, so now we have, um, we have ls, we have cd to change directory, we have pico to open up text files. Uh, we have, um, in addition to, to changing directories, we could make a directory. So, and that is uh, mkdir, mkdir. So I can make a directory called um, my directory. And I would simply type in mkdir space my directory. And now when I uh, type in ls for this Python game folder, I um, will uh, not only get a, a series of pink files uh, for uh, uh, pictures, green files for audio, gray files for text files, but I will get now a purplish bluish file called uh, uh, my directory, and that's a directory. I could look in there, ls my directory, and I'd see nothing's there. Uh, that's okay, maybe I don't need it. So I could remove directory. Uh, rmdir my directory. Okay, that will remove my directory. So these basic uh, uh, navigation tools will help you. Uh, get through a series of directories, help you look at uh, particular files, uh, sometimes to uh, uh, change them even, or make new ones. Uh, for instance, uh, if I type in, I say I want to edit a file, and it doesn't exist, and I just type in the name of a new uh, 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 file, Maybe it is my new file.txt. It doesn't exist in this directory. Pico will create it. And it will say at the bottom, this is a new file, and I will type in all sorts of things. It's saying this is my new file. I like it very much. Sign it at the bottom with my name. And now when I hit Control X, I'll type in, yes, I do want to save this modified buffer. And it'll give me a file name to write. My new file.txt, the one I named? Why, yes. 
And now when I hit LS, it will occur. Um, this is the basic way to get around. Okay. And uh, if I ever get lost, oh, how do I get out of here? How do I get back to where I started? What do I do? I exit, E-X-I-T. And that'll bring me right back to where I was before which is this graphic user interface. Now, the graphic user interface is useful for some very basic things. Um, it's great for setting up internet access. So over here on the right, this set of uh, blue expanding concentric rings, uh, that's the icon for usually Wi-Fi communication. If I click on that with my mouse, it'll show me what Wi-Fi networks are in the area. And if I have installed a USB dongle it's called i don't know a wi-fi dongle usb a little tiny gadget you can buy for about 15 bucks um you can surf the web or the internet uh using uh, a connection that you obtain here or you can take your computer to a, a place a library perhaps that does have free wi-fi um that's one place to go uh you'll notice over here on the left um, there's a Raspberry, which is, of course, because this is a Raspberry Pi, uh, you click on that and you'll notice it says menu. It takes you to a classic series of options with sub options. And there are some programs that come on here that are really important. Uh, well, there are games. That's great. A few come already installed. Accessories, which is lovely. Uh, your text editor, your terminal, an image viewer. Help is a really important uh option here. It gives you reference not only to the Raspberry Pi, but also to uh, the particular kind of Linux that is on this computer called Debian. There are a few other options that are really important. One is a web browser. Uh, you can click on that. It is a globe for the World Wide Web, and you'll be taken to a pretty normal web browser with a place where you can enter any um, web address or URL, if I type in news.google.com, for instance, and my internet access is hooked up here with Wi-Fi, you'll notice here I have a series of news stories on issues of the day. So this is the basic way to uh, work with your graphic user interface and the terminal. Um, that's a way to get started. There are many more commands in Linux, and there are a number of other things that you can do with your graphic user interface. Um, and what we're going to talk about next in our next video is ways of installing new programs that will allow you to do exactly what you want um, to look at social media, not just on a web browser, but to look at the data underneath. Uh, we're going to figure out how to install a program uh, called R, and to get it running. And then in the subsequent videos, we'll talk about how to use this program called R, which is really just the letter R, um, in order to collect social media data and place it into uh, uh, saved data files that describe the information you want to obtain. So you can answer the questions that you have about what people do on social media.